Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss if we have a highly effective hedge and why do we have to know whether we have a highly effective hedge or not. Here's the reason, very simple. Derivative instruments are risky, are very, very risky financial statements. So that's why we want to know as accountant whether our hedge is an effective hedge and if it is an effective hedge, it will qualify for hedge accounting. Now, I said very risky. I didn't say only risky. I said very risky. Matter of fact, Warren Buffett called financial derivatives as weapons of mass destruction. What does that mean? Well, it means they are risky business. Warren Buffett is the best investor of all time. He once called those instruments financial weapons of mass destruction because they were part of our financial crisis. What happened during the financial crisis of 2007, 2008, many companies had had derivative instrument without understanding the their effect on the financial statements. So fin remember, derivatives instrument can be used for speculation, which we talked about this, or it can be used for hedging. So if it is for hedging, show me it's for hedging because if it's used for speculation, it doesn't qualify for hedge accounting. I hope I make the point here. So the point is, if you have a deriv derivative instrument and the purpose is hedging, you're going to have to show me it's for hedging. You're going to have to show me mean the company will have to show the users. Therefore, they would qualify for hedge accounting. Otherwise, you, otherwise you are misleading the users. You have weapons of mass destruction inside your financial statements that could explode and destroy the company's value. Actually, in 2007, 2008, those derivative, derivative instrument destroyed the whole economy, not a particular company. The whole system almost went down. So to qualify for hedge accounting, which is hedging, it means to protect, your hedge, whether it's a cash flow or a fair value, must be effective. Otherwise, you're a speculator. And if you're a speculator, you need to let us know that you're a speculator. Investors want to know. How, how do we know that a hedge is effective? Well, the hedge item and the hedge instrument must be effective. What does that mean? It means they have to be negatively correlated. Well, what does that mean? It means if the hedge item, if we're trying to protect oil or gasoline that we have from a plunge in value, if they do indeed plunge, the hedging instrument go up. If their value goes up, then our hedging instrument goes down. It means they are negatively related. How negatively they have to be, we'll see. What's the what's that level? Now, in, in all my examples, I show you it was a perfect hedge. Now, that's not that's not true. So, for example, you could have you cannot, for example, say I'm hedging my oil prices with a contract of coffee. Well, those are not related to each other. They have to make sense. So the hedging instrument and the hedge item has to has have to make sense under those circumstances. That's that's basically mere speculation. What's the re, what's the relationship between the oil prices and buying a future contract of coffee, whether it's a, a put or or, uh, or call? It doesn't really matter. So fast be required that, that companies assess the effectiveness at the end of each quarter when they publish the financial statements. Here we are dealing with publicly traded companies. They must document basically the effectiveness, explain themselves. Now, not at the time, they don't have to do it at the time at the inception of the contract, by, by the issue date, they have to do it. So now we're gonna have to learn how, how do we measure effectiveness of that hedge. Before we proceed, I would like to remind you whether you are an accounting student or a CPA candidate to take a look at my website, farhatlectures.com. I don't replace your CPA review course nor your accounting course. My motto is saving accounting students and CPA candidate one at a time by providing you resources for various courses, lectures, multiple choice, true, false. That's going to help you understand the material. If you're studying for your CPA exam, my material is aligned with your Becker, Roger, Gleam, Wiley, or the or your favorite CPA review course. I also give you access to 1,500 previously released AI CPA questions in their original format with detailed solution. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation. Like this recording. Share it with others. Connect with me on Instagram. I'm trying to grow my Instagram followers. Facebook, Twitter, and Reddit. So how do we measure whether it's highly effective or not? Well, the first thing I need to tell you, the relationship does not have to be 100% to be effective. For example, if we have a hedging instrument and it went up in value and the hedged item went down in $100 in value, well, one divided by one is negative one in this example. We call this as a perfect hedge. It means they are perfectly correlated. Really, what's gonna happen, if you look from an income statement perspective, if you add 100, reduce by 100, the net effect is zero. It means really there's no effect and you are protecting the item you are trying to protect.
Now, how about if the hedging instrument went up to $110 in value and the hedged item went down by $90? What do we have to do under those circumstances? Let's compute, let's compute our relationship. 100 divided by 90 is 1.22 or 122%. Well, is this still considered effective? What is the limit? What's the boundary? Well, here's the boundary. As long as you, you are between 125 on the upper side and 80 on the lower side, then you are good. How do you measure this? Simply put, you will take the dollar change in the hedging instrument, the dollar change in the hedging instrument relative to the dollar change in the hedged item. Just relative means you take 110 divided by 90. One's going to be positive, one's going to be negative. So the slope will be negative, obviously. Although I don't, you know, I did not put, you you know, I did not mention it here. It's negative one point. 1.22, it's a negative slope, but as long as the slope is between 125 and 180, then it's considered highly effective. Simply put, if it's more, then really this is not, you're, you're not, you're not entering into this transaction for, for hedging purposes, you're entering into this transaction for speculation purposes, which is the accounting will change. The accounting will change. Okay. So if higher or lower than the boundary, then you cannot use hedge accounting as long as you're within that boundary. Also, companies could use uh, software to do this using regression to compute that boundary limitation if they have many hedge instruments, if it's complicated. Also, some companies, they don't have to do this computation. If they can show that the, that the, that the hedge is effective at the inception of the contract, then guess what? They don't have to do this quantitative assessment. You may think this is easy, the quantitative assessment, but if you have many hedging instruments and those hedging instruments are changing in value, or there's sometimes there's no fair value for them, then it's a lot of work for the company. So they would like to show if it's effective, so they don't, they don't have to do all this work. There's a shortcut method. For example, if you have a perfect interest rate swap agreement, for example, if you have if you have a loan with a variable interest rate, then you can get another loan and a swap agreement with a fixed interest rate. The loan balances are the same the interest rate are exactly the opposite of what you want, then it's a perfect hedge, then you're good to go. This is called the shortcut method. Sometimes you could use also something called the critical term match method. Those are methods used to to not to not go through all the computation. For example, if you have a forecasted transaction and you can show there's a perfect hedge between the two. So the point I'm trying to make here is the hedge has to be highly effective. To be highly effective, the boundary has to be between 125 and 80%. Now, you have to disclose everything that we said. Remember, the users must understand your risk. Why? Because we are dealing with weapons of mass destruction. And that's not me, that's Warren Buffett. That what, do, what would the company will have to disclose? The objectives of the strategy. What is their objective from the hedging? They have to spell it out. What strategy are they using to reach that objective. What are you, are you using? Calls, options, futures. What are you using? Tell us, swaps. If it's a fair value hedge, explain the income statement item. Give us the detail, how, you, how, how things are listed on the income statement. Reconcile them. If it's a cash flow hedge, explain the OCI or any reclassification needed that leaves OCI to the income statement. Simply put, for disclosure purposes, explain to the users so they understand the risk that they are taking and how you are managing those risks, how you are managing th those risks through derivative instruments, which are what? Weapons of mass destruction, if not disclosed or used properly. What should you do now? Go to forhatlectures.com and work multiple choice questions to reinforce those concepts. If you're an accounting student, take your education seriously. If you're a CPA exam, make, make an investment in my, in my, in my course. It will help you tremendously along your CPA review course. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.